Hey, what's up? Today I'm doing something a little different. I'm reacting to Geography Now Jamaica. I figured since a lot of the content on my channel is me reacting to a lot of Jamaican athletes, I might as well, you know, learn more about the island. So I'm excited to get into this one. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. In Tatwa Let's poems go, by Louise Bennett. Here's a poem about a time a circus came to Kingston and a lion escaped from its cage. What a magic, what a mystery. Shout out to all my Jamaican viewers and subscribers. There's a lot of you. Like when I look at my analytics, a lot of viewers are Jamaican, so or from Jamaica. And bust the cage door down, the lion jumped the wall. And not a soul done holla out, and not a soul done ball. Okay. The lion mingled with the crowd and prowl from west to east. The people sitting calmly and salute the king of beasts. I love Patois. <laughs> My part to a comprehension is decent because nah. I just Everybody watch a lot of um, ja. like Jamaican athletes and like they vlogs and stuff. So I'd be hearing them when they speak um, in speak patois. So my comprehension is decent, but I can't. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know how to speak it. But um, how did he do? <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. Iconic Caribbean nation to ever hit international mainstream pop culture. So many things to talk about. Let's just jump in. It. Ah, back in the Caribbean. Don't you just love this region of the planet? First of all, Jamaica is the fourth largest island country in the Caribbean, located west of Haiti, south of Cuba, and east What's of the, the Cayman largest? Islands, the where all the billionaires hide those wonderfully offshore bank accounts to avoid taxes. Jamaica is divided into 14 parishes in the capital, Kingston, in itself acting as a parish. The parishes are further kind of split into okay. three historic There's counties that don't have any administrative relevance. Yeah. They are okay. Cornwall, Middlesex, and Surrey. Yeah, with names like that, you can almost smell the British residue. The largest cities so it's like the a capital, parish Kingston, the same as Spanish province. Town, Portsmouth both in the St. Catherine Parish. However, if we're talking about outside the general Kingston area, the next largest would be Montego Bay. Because here yeah, we use province. Uh, we've got nine provinces. Kingston, Norman, and then Manly, in a province, you've got different Montego cities. Montego Bay's Sangster International and Bosco Bell's Ian Fleming International. There was some controversy over naming that last airport because everybody was like, why don't we name it after a Jamaican person? But Prime yeah. Minister Golding was like, look, the dude kind of put Jamaica on the map. And if it wasn't for so, us, he wouldn't have had the inspiration to create James Bond. So suck it up, people. Place, now, despite man. being small, Jamaica still holds its ground on the disputed territory between between them and Colombia, Nicaragua, and the U.S. over the uninhabited submerged reef sandbank areas of Bajo Nuevo and the Serenia Bank. Remember, people, the second you discover even the smallest sandbank protruding from the sea, you gotta claim it. That way, you get an exclusive economic zone. Woohoo! Speaking of which, the country has about 30 smaller islands and islets oh, and keys okay. and sandbanks lining their shores. The largest one being Great Goat Island in the south across Moore's Pen. Now, the one thing you need to know about Jamaica and its charm is that if you come, you will notice some of the strangest place names imaginable. Each town has a little bit of a story and context. So you'll encounter things like Broke Neck Gully, Rat oh. Trap, Betty's Hope, Rest and Be Thankful, Old Woman Savannah, See Me No More, Time and Patience, Wait a Bit, Wait, and my personal favorite, Me No Sen, You No Come. Jamaicans just like to- That's funny because here in South Africa, we can we do the same thing. Um, a lot of like our people, you know, underprivileged, um, you know, government doesn't take care of them. They displaced. So when they create their own little, um, you know, when they build their shelters, and create their own little communities. They name the places after a person or like a significant event. So like you might come across a place named Corona or like COVID, um, just the strangest names, but there's a story behind those names. So I get it, I get it, Beth. Simple, no need to overcomplicate. Hmm, what should we call this place? Drop Sandwich Lagoon! Another interesting thing is that Jamaica has maroon villages, which are inhabited by people descended from slaves that escaped and created their own free societies in the mountain. Oh wow. Maroon villages. These villages would eventually play a strong role in Jamaica's history and in a future episode, Sierra Leone. Well, you'll just have to wait like 47 years for that episode. Today, they kind of hold like a slight autonomous and separate role from the rest of Jamaican culture as they live in secluded areas holding on to ancient African traditions. Otherwise, some top notable spaces of interest might include Hero Circle, glistening waters with bioluminescent Ooh, organisms that waters. light up, Windsor's Fire Spring, you can literally light it on fire, Sunken wait, Pirate what? City, Floyd's Pelican Bar made of driftwood, Dolphin Cove, the Bob Marley Museum and Mausoleum, Dunn's River Falls, Reggae Beach, Cool Runnings Water Park, Mountain River Cave with wow, Taino that's so and beautiful, man. I wish Mystic we would Mountain Rainforest, see this stuff. Bobsledding in Ochos Rios, Martha Bray River with wooden rafts, and like Irie Blue media? Hole in Secret Falls. Yeah, I'm still kind of yeah, mind blown over that fire, stuff. water, and glowing lagoon place. That's just proof that Jamaica is thriving with magical natural wonders. Which brings us to... Okay, for 
Jamaica, Jamaica may be Africa. small, but it is definitely loaded with natural treasures. First of all, Jamaica lies below the Cayman Trough on the Nicaragua Rise, an area in the Caribbean Sea that is elevated, giving Jamaica shallower waters and richer biodiversity. This also gives them the seventh largest natural harbor in the world, seventh Kingston largest. Harbor. The country is also about 146 miles long, 235 kilometers, and at its widest, only about 52 miles, 84 kilometers wide. Basically, Jamaica is made That's up of tiny. nice valleys and plains in the west and center, sometimes referred to as cockpit country, with a small mocho and dry harbor mountains in the center. And finally, the tallest range, the Blue Mountains, with the tallest peak, Blue Mountain Peak, in the east, starting around Kingston. The longest river being the Black River on the west side, and Wally Wash Pond being the we largest body of water river. inland. Now, just like we studied in the Dominica episode, Jamaica is also home to natural mineral and hot springs, such as Blue Hole, Bubbling Springs, Milk River, Rockford Mineral Spa, and the Blue Lagoon. Not this one, this one. Although much of the island has been stripped for agriculture, wildlife is also quite prevalent, especially in the undisturbed forests in the north and Blue Mountains. Animals like bats, hutia, boar, and the indigenous Jamaican boa and freshwater Jamaican slider turtle can be found. Speaking of agriculture, Jamaica was primarily used by the colonists for sugar plantations. However, today all sorts of crops are grown, but most notably the ackee fruit, which actually ackee tastes fruit. salty, not sweet. Ackee is used in the national dish ackee and salt fish. Otherwise, other notable Jamaican dishes might include rice and peas, jerk chicken, chicken foot soup, manish water, steamed kalaloo, and gizada. And I know what half of you are thinking. Yes, let's talk ganja. Yes, we all know it. Cannabis is pretty Jamaican internationally cuisine? recognized as a part of Jamaican culture. It was actually introduced from India by indentured servants from India, which is where the word ganja comes from. It's weird because for the longest time, growing oh, marijuana and even possessing that. it was illegal, even though you can literally just find plants in the middle of the forests. It wasn't until 2015 that the country voted to decriminalize and amend strict laws. Today, you are allowed to have up to five plants legally, more if you have a cultivator's license. Possession up to two ounces or 56 grams is legal. And Rastafarians are allowed we to also, use it for um, legalized And the Rastafarians marijuana. are a whole other story. But Jamaican's I think that's people only are in few, West but incredibly world renowned and unique in so many ways. Or is it like all over South Africa? Somebody please correct me. Jamaica need. lives by the motto, out of you many, one people, homes, attributing the unity to all the cultural pieces yourself. that have made them who they are today. First of all, the country okay, has about 3 million people. people and is the third largest Anglophone nation in the Americas. The vast majority of Jamaicans identify as black at over 90%, about 7% are mixed, and the remainder are actually mostly made up of Asians, not whites, like the Chinese and Indian Jamaicans, with whites following after, mostly descended from British colonialists and other people groups following. And the coolest thing is they all speak in a Jamaican accent. Here's a white guy and a Chinese guy both born in Jamaica. Yeah, I'm um, come from Jamaica. We come from the western part of Jamaica. Can't really tell you where we come <laughs> this from. This is so there, trippy to me. Okay, this is probably very ignorant. It's so weird seeing and hearing a white person first calling themselves Jamaican to speaking in a Jamaican accent. My brain just can't like calculate or make that make sense. It is the strangest thing ever. Tell you where we come from down there though, because I don't know where we come from. I'm Jamaican. Well, if people don't believe me, them don't believe I come from Jamaica because I'm Chinese. Yeah, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? They use the Jamaican dollar as their currency, they use the type A, B, American style plug outlets, and they drive on the left side of the road. Okay, now, even so though they have a small population, Jamaica like has probably made the, the biggest global impact for Co Caribbean um, culture out of colonies, all their neighbors. Yeah. In the quickest way I can summarize their history, Tainos and Arawaks, Christopher Columbus comes in and calls it Santiago, slaves come in from Africa, Brits come in calling it Jamaica, Slavery abolished in 1838. The Brits were like, dang, we need cheap labor since the slaves are free. Hmm, oh yeah, let's do the same thing we did with Guyana. Come on, Indians and Chinese. Finally, Jamaica gained independence in 1962. However, they still fall under the Commonwealth okay. as a constitutional monarchy, where Queen Elizabeth still remains the technical head of state, but nobody really sees her as like the head head of state. Now, due to Jamaica's relative isolation from the rest of the Antilles, Jamaica had to kind of develop their own unique style of customs and traditions. For one, Christianity has played a huge role in Jamaica. Jamaica also has more churches per square kilometer than anywhere else in the world. Wow. Contrary to popular belief, Rastafarianism, although started in Jamaica in the 1930s, only makes a small minority of somewhere around 5% of the population. If you don't know anything about Rastafarianism, basically it's an Afrocentric belief system that takes inspiration from the Christian Bible as certain rituals and doctrines like the one we discussed in the Ethiopia episode, in which they believe that Haile Selassie was the Messiah, yada yada yada. If you're interested in learning it, just Google it. I wish it was that easy. I wish I could just do that for every episode. Just Google it. Jamaica. Done. Second, we all know the biggest source of global influence for Jamaica would be- The Rastafarian culture and religion is very popular here in South Africa. Like there's a lot of Rastafarian communities, especially like in the Western Cape. I wonder what like outside of Jamaica, where the largest Rastafarian communities are. I'd, I need to Google that and find out. But if you know, you can just drop it down in the comment section. 
there's a lot of similarities between South Africa and Jamaica, especially when it comes to their music. I don't think people understand just how influential and how impactful um, reggae music was um, when it comes to the apartheid movement in South Africa. Like, it runs deep, man. It's deep. The connection is, is, is deep influence for Jamaica would be, no doubt, the music. Starting in the 50s, Jamaica's ska and rock steady precursors to the 60s reggae and dancehall melodies not only became super popular in themselves, but also paved the way for other branch genres like hip hop and EDM. In order to really appreciate Jamaican music though, it might be wise to brush up on the part I personally find most fascinating, patois. Now, although in a legal sense, the official language of Jamaica is standard Jamaican English or SJE, many would say that technically there are two languages, the other being Jamaican patois, which is basically like an English Creole, much like what Haiti did with French, the thing is, Jamaican Patois is kind of like a loose, feel-it-as-you-go type of language. It doesn't have an official standardized format, but there are certainly universally used words, such as Talawa, Crosses, Pitney, Dopi, Big Up, and of course, everyone knows the classics Wagwan and Irie. However, when they want to emphasize something, they like repeat <laughs> yeah, the word twice, like ones. Pasa Pasa, Licky Licky, Picky Picky, and they always use like filler words which don't have any meaning, but it kind of illustrates the story better. For example, okay, Jamaican geography Darren wrote this, and I'm going to try to see if I could do it. So me go so Bops and run a race, then me go err and run hard, and me go rups, rups, flick, flick, and me win it easily. I don't know how I did. That was either incredibly offensive or kind of acceptable. Oh, and if you make a Jamaican friend, chances are you will get a nickname. And it's usually based off of anything they notice from you. Yo, man, what your name? Uh, Keith. Nah, man, you like the broom, your name broomy. You eat the cupcake, your name <laughs> Munchie. You're like raising that. three daughters in a house in San Francisco. Me go and call ya. I just think that's a black thing. Wait, we could go on explaining more about the various festivals, traditions, dances, or how they are the only Caribbean nation with an active hockey team, even though all the players are like literally Canadian nationals, but that'll take too long. For what it's worth, some notable people of Jamaican descent might include Michael Lee Chin, Dr. Thomas P. Lecky, Oliver Samuel, Sprinters Usain Bolt, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, and Asafa Powell, Merlin Oti, Dustin Brown, Jimmy Cliff, Ziggy Marley, Shaggy, Mona Hammond, Grace Jones, Sonia Richards Ross, Mary Seacole, Damian Marley, Sean Kingston, Portia Simpson Miller, Marcus Garvey, Naomi Campbell, Notorious B.I.G., Patrick Ewing, Louise Simone Bennett, and the most iconic Jamaican maybe of all time, the master himself, Robert Bob Nesta Marley. All right, now we gotta move on and see who else likes to dance the reggae beat with Jamaica. If you ask a Jamaican what Jamaicans are best at, they'll probably say something like knowing how to slow down and take it easy when life needs to. Therefore, it's not hard for other countries to like Jamaica. First of all, Jamaica has close ties to Cuba as they have been giving scholarships and medical help for decades. Treaties and business deals have always been active. They have a funny little rivalry with Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados though when it comes to dominating the tourism industry and sports competitions. But when they meet up as people, it's like they're brothers all over again. China keeps an eye on them considering that they already have a noticeable Chinese minority. By the way, Tessa and Chin oh, wow. who wrote the voice in the US was like a huge deal and they have been investing like crazy over the past few decades. Jamaicans see this as kind of like a suspiciously nice gesture because they like the business but they don't want to be taken over by excessive debt. Also like mentioned in the Ethiopia episode, Jamaicans love Ethiopia, especially Rastafarians. In terms of their best friends though, the Jamaicans I've talked to have said most likely their fellow Anglophone nations, the USA, Canada, and the UK. These areas have the largest Jamaican diaspora communities and remittance money makes a huge part of their yeah. economy. Visa free entry is allowed for each nation and each country places Jamaica high on tourism publicity, which in return gives them huge global popularity. In conclusion, Jamaica is like the little island that could and music was its fuel. People all around the world now put this tiny landmass in high regard, all because they have that certain Talawa charm, but with a laid back life that everyone admires. Stay tuned, Japan is coming up next. Yes, I enjoy that. I learned so much. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't know. A lot of stuff that I did know. It was mainly like the physical geography stuff. Eastern world just controls a lot of like media, um, and then that results in like our perceptions and associations of places So there's a lot of like things that I didn't know and um, I'm glad that I, I watched this and learned um, If there are any more videos where I can learn other stuff, you know, maybe it goes into detail Please link that down below in the comment section Because I'm I want to learn. I want to learn more about the island. I love how vibrant the people are in Jamaica It reminds me of home there are so many similarities. I suppose it's true for all black people across African diaspora. Um, there's something, you know, that connects us, even though we are on all four corners of the world. Hopefully one day I'll be able to travel to Jamaica because I'd love to see the island for myself because I know these, these videos and these images that we see don't do these places justice. 
so maybe one day man in the meantime i'm gonna brush up on my patois um thank you family for watching especially if you made it this far go ahead and smash the like button or click the dislike button however you feeling today um and yeah i will see you in the next video